All right, how's everybody doing? This is the Comic Samurai. I want to welcome you to my next video, and tonight we're going to be doing something a little different again. This is going to be my part two of my comic book, Battle Royale. I picked out about 125 of my all-time favorite covers, and I'm going to go through them and rank them. And each one of these tiers has got a level of my interest in them. So I'm going to uh, look at these comics, do my knee-jerk reaction, get them organized, and then we're going to go and we're going to find out what my top 100 comic books of all time are. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First up, we got this Wolverine number one. Now, these are all in random order, but this is one of my favorite comic books of all time. Oh, man, this is tough. It's got it. I'm starting it off. It's got to be in my top 20. I mean, I just love that cover. Next up, we got Defenders number 10. I did not do this on purpose. All of these are in random order, but this one is one of my favorites. It was one of the first ones I saved up for, ordered through the mail, and when it came, it was Christmas for a month. I love that cover. Yeah, it, this is another one that's got to be in my top 20. Now, uh, the secondary part of this video is if you want to try to keep up with me, you can take a drink when I do, but you don't have to. Next up, we got Ghost Rider number 16, and this is a text cover, but it's got not only Spider-Man, Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze, the original Ghost Rider, but it also has the Hobgoblin. And in this one, something happened to Johnny Blaze's shotgun, so he shoots like hellfire out of it. I absolutely love this. It's got to be in my top 50. I love that cover. Next up, we got Captain America number 241 by Frank Miller. It's the most iconic white cover in existence. Oh, man. The story inside was so bad, though, and the art inside. and the, uh, Top 50 again. I'm sorry. I would have put it higher if the story wasn't so bad. I, don't ha I hate to badmouth any comic book, but, man, <laughs> you see a cover like that with Frank Miller, and then you open it, and you're like, that's not Frank Miller art anymore. Next up, we got... Incredible Hulk 125. Oh, man, I think this is a Bronze Age, and it sums up what Bronze Age covers are. It's my favorite. I, oh, man, I love that. Covers everything. Top 40, at least. I love that comic. Oh, man, I really do like that one. Next up, ah, this is tough. A classic X-Men number 30. I remember buying this off the rack, and the one I got was all messed up. It didn't have good colors on the cover, but it's humorous. I, I forgot to point out this image of Banshee with the screwdriver. Like, should we fix it? I, there's so much humor in this one. It's got to be in my top 40. I love that cover. Next up, Amazing Spider-Man number 324, and this is one of my favorite Todd McFarlane covers from his run. Oh, those hands, Sabretooth, the villain, spotlighted. Oh, man. The only beef I have with it is I had one as a kid that I really read, and I just, I was in terrible shape. But this one, let's, it's got to be on the top, bottom tier. It's going to have to fight to keep, to stay in the run. I don't like covers that feature villains, uh, usually. It's got a, I usually like the heroes, and... It takes something special for me to choose a villain cover. But this one is Marvel Team Up number 117, and it's my all-time favorite Spider-Man Wolverine cover, Bob Layton, The Perspective, Top 40. Yep, that's got to be Top 40. Oh, man. <laughs> These are all so good. Next up, Fantastic Four number 243, my favorite Galactus, John Byrne, Fantastic Four cover. There were so many in his run I wanted to use. Oh, man. Oh, man. Top 60. Top 60. I, and like 63, 64, it's going to be in the top. Oh, okay. All right. X-Men number 213. Something has to give. This is an Alan Davis. And if they didn't have this green and pink here with Cyclock, it would have been so much higher. But I take everything into account when I'm when I'm measuring these comics. The trade dress, the story inside, my history with it, the nostalgia. So this is gotta this is gonna have to fight to stay in it just because of the trade dress. Isn't that crazy? Next up is Web of Spider-Man 29, one of my favorites. 
if not my favorite, black costume Spider-Man cover. I tell the story all the time. My puppy came into the room and jumped on all my comics when I had them out after getting a mail order, and she put a paw print on this one, but I kind of like it more because it has that paw print on it. This has got to be my top 50 above. So let's go here, and then it can fight its way and figure it out. Next up, we got V for Vendetta, number eight. And this is one of my favorites. It's a David Lloyd cover. And it sums up everything I loved about V for Vendetta. They didn't include this scene in the movie, though, so it pissed me off, which makes me kind of like this cover more. I love the blue. Top 90, at least. It's going to have to battle to stay in it. Sorry. Oh, man, this is tough. Next up, Detective, number 578. And of all those year two covers by Todd McFarlane and Alan Davis, this was my favorite. But it's better as a set. On its own, it's going to have to fight to stay alive. Next up, we got Silver Surfer number 75. Oh, I love this cover. I love it. Oh, it's like holding something electric, like just a live wire. Oh, man, the lights. I almost like it more than Silver Surfer number 50. This has grown on me so much. I don't really remember the story so much inside, though, like I do on Silver Surfer number 50, where he finds his mom dead in a bathtub. But this one, oh, that cover, just on the cover, the nostalgia. Oh, man. I'm putting it in my top 20. I'm doing it. Oh, I love that cover. All right, next up, Avengers 276, one of my favorite Thor covers of all time. It just, that image of Thor, and I think it was the Masters of Evil, Brotherhood of Evil something, they attack it, and it's Thor's last stand. Oh, Hercules has to fight everybody. I love this cover. It's my favorite Avengers, the 40-something. All right. Oh, these are also, oh, man, every one of these is so good. Thor, 337, the classic first Beta Ray Bill, Walter Simonson on Thor, Oh, man, I love this cover. However, I kind of like the next one better, and it's blown up so much, and people just don't read it. So they always want to get it graded, and they care about what condition. Ah, top 70, 80, something. It's got to be down there. I'm sorry. Oh, man, X-Men Annual 1 by Jim Lee, one of Jim Lee's most underrated covers. I love this one. Absolutely love it. This has got to be in my top 40 at least at least next up oh man everyone's a classic web of spider-man number one charles fess uh the next the only the third spider-man number one comic that ever came out the colors the setting the mood top 50 it's got to be in my top 50 right i uh, yeah top 50 oh Next up, all right, Incredible Hulk number 350. This is one of my favorites. It's the best fight between the Hulk and the Thing. My favorite version of the Hulk versus my favorite version of the Thing with the spikes. It's controversial, but I loved them when they were in that version, each of them. I didn't like that Dr. Doom was manipulating them, but this is in my top 20 for sure, if not my top 10. I love that cover, underrated. Oh, man, the Wolverine number six with Bloodsport. And uh, Rough House, uh, the black cover, this is when I was really getting into Wolverine at the peak. It's got to be top 40 at least. I love that comic. Next up, Miracle Man, number 15, that Toddle Bean, uh, Beset Alan Moore. Oh, and it's so graphic. It's such a, the cover inside, Kid Miracle Man killing everybody in here. Uh, but the cover, geez, Louise, that's got to be in my top 80. Next up, X Factor number 32. This is a Stephen Lightly, Lightly cover. Oh, I love that image of Thor and Cyclops. You never see those two go up. And look at that thumbnail. It was before McFarland started doing it. Oh, I love that image of Cyclops there. That adds to it. Even the thumbnail, if it's good art, I'll take into account. Top 50. Yep. Okay. Next up, Justice Society number one. My all-time favorite sexy girl, Power Girl comic book cover. 
Alex Ross. I don't even have to think about it. That's in my top 20, if not my top 10. Oh, man. Next up, X-Men number 102. The first fight between Colossus and the Juggernaut. Dave Cockrum with Storm cowering in the corner. Oh, man. I love this one. Top 70. Top 70. Yep, for sure. Next up, long shot number four. Oh, my all-time favorite sexy girl. The She-Hulk, her leg warmers, Spider-Man swinging in, Art Adams, top 20. I Oh, man, it's going to be tough. I am going to have to whittle it down. Oh, man, Conan 248, another Art Adams cover of Beheading and a Bondage cover, Red Sonja. Oh, I just got into that type of cover just recently. Top, top 40 at least, at least, and this one might do very well. That one might wake its way up through the rings. All right, Moon Knight, 24. I love that Bill Senkovich cover. Good colors, the implied lines. The only thing is that there's so much red. I'm usually not a fan of red, and that stink kind of stays with it. I'm sorry, but it dropped down. It's going to have to fight to stay in it. Next up, Wolverine, 46. Oh, one of my favorite iterations of Wolverine done by Rob Liefeld. This is a wraparound cover. I love this. It's underrated. Top 50 at least. Next up, X-Men number 109. Uh, it's a Cockrum cover. John Byrne redid it in Alpha Flight, and I love that about it, but it's better displayed as a pair. <sighs> it's going to have to drop down and fight its way to stay in. All right, next one, New Mutants 87. First Rob Liefeld McFarland cover that caught my eye. It's not their first together, but first cable. I found this one. I remember seeing it on the wall. I went to this comic shop and it was there and there. And I said, if it's there still today, I'm going to buy it. And I did. I paid 20 bucks for it. Ooh, top 70. I hate to do it. Oh, I hate to put that so low. But next up, Ghost Rider 15, the glow in the dark, my favorite gimmick cover. I love when they have the reprint of that image in the thumbnail, but I love a UPC. It glows so good. Top 20. It's top 20 material. I love that cover. When a gimmick is done right, I love it. All right, let's move it on. Daredevil 174 with Elektra and the Gladiator, Frank Miller. It's so colorful with the swords in the foreground. I love when they have a background, a midground, and a foreground. It's underrated. Daredevil, so many good covers. 80, 80, 80, 80, 80. All right. Next up. Oh, geez. These are all just every one of them is a gem. X-Men 141. Days of Future Past. John Byrne. It's been homaged. One of my favorites. But I think I like the next one, 142, a little better. So, uh, yeah, it's got to be in my top 80, though. That one is going to be on permanent display. The winners of this are all going to go on this wall behind me and have a special part, uh, spot of honor. Next up is Batman 417, and it's a Zek cover, uh, the, the Ten Knights of the Beast. I love this one. It's got to be in my top 50. My uh, top 50, yes. So it doesn't make that row. Next up, Wildcats 31, the Jim Lee cover with Voodoo. It was my favorite as a kid, but... Wildcats weren't my favorite team if the writing was better. So it's got a fight to stay in it. Next up, X-Men 122 of all the early X-Men stuff. I love that one with Colossus and Wolverine in the background. Top 30 at least. All right, next up, Judge Dredd, number one, Brian Bolin. The orange cover with the text. I love how they use that. Ah, oh, man, if he'd have done more, if the movie, if the first movie would have been better with Sylvester Stallone, the second one was awesome. It's got a fight to stay in it, though. Next up, ah, oh, Secret Wars number four. I like this one better than number eight with Spider-Man's first costume. This is the Hulk holding it up, a Bob Layton classic. Ah, oh, it's top 70. I mean, it's got to be there. Next up, JSA number 78. It's one of those Alex Ross ones. And I love that cover. Oh, look at that. It's just one of my favorites. Top top 30 at least. That's got to be in this row. Next up, Green Lantern 49. It's iconic. I love this cover. I, was, I recognized it as soon as I saw it as this is a classic. And it's caught fire, but so many people have jumped on the bandwagon. So many bad homages have been done. 
It's going to have to fight to stay in it. Next up, X-Men 133, the first Wolverine solo story. They, you know, they did a classic X-Men reprint of this and a new cover by Lightly, and I like that one too. But this one by Byrne, it it ranks in my top 100 for sure. It's near the bottom, but oh man. Next up, Captain America. It's another John Byrne, Captain America 248, where he fights Dragon Man, one of the most underrated comic books of all time. And because of that, it gets a couple bonus points. I love this cover. I love that comic, the lighting, the coloring. Mm, yeah, it's got to be on this tier also. Oh, man, all these. It's getting so hard. Wolverine Limited Series number four by Frank Miller. That cover, the most underrated one of that four-issue limited series. It's going to have to fight to stay in it, though. Next up, Silver Surfer number 18, Galactus versus the Inbetweener, Ron Lim. Oh, man, I love that. Love that. Seeing the impact of a punch. Top 50. All right, next up, Blade number five. Every time I see this cover and read this comic, I see something new. I just love that cover. It's humorous. It's graphic. And the nasty thing I noticed is that Wolverine is actually shown in the glasses of Blade. It's so it, it just in the last week, it raised a couple places. Top 30. Top 30. Oh, my gosh. It's getting tight in here. All right, let's move it on. Boy, we got a lot left. All right, Captain America Annual 8. This is uh, Mike Zach. I'm, I've said enough. It's top 20, top 10, if nothing else, for sure. I love that comic. Next up, X-Men. Uh, 394, Ian Churchill, Wolverine, Jean Grey kissing. It's so sexy. Top 40, at least. Uh, yeah, that's got to go right about there. Dare, next up, Daredevil. 179. Oh, I love that one. Electra holding is... There's, as my when I was a kid, my friend loved this one. It's got to be like in my top eighty, that's for sure. Action Comics Annual One, Art Adams, my all-time favorite spooky story. I read this one every Halloween. Top twenty. This is top twenty for sure. Next up, X Factor Thirty Nine. I love that cover. It's a Walter Simonson. It was the last Inferno one where they finally defeat Mr. S uh, Sinister. Top 40 at least. At least. At least. Oh, I love that one. Next up, X-Men 162. My favorite Wolverine story in the X-Men. But the cover, that pink, uh, it's got a fight to stay in it. You're going to have to earn your place. All-Star Squadron, number 37, Captain Marvel versus Superman. It's going to have to fight, too. Uh, I love when they fight, and that's my best image of them fighting. But, all right, Amazing Spider-Man 281, my favorite uh, story in Spider-Man. I forgot to mention in the last one that uh, Hobgoblin and uh, Jack-O-Lantern fight in this one, too. So, uh, it's just battles galore. Hydro-Man fights Sandman. And all these villains sp fight Spider-Man with Spider-Man in his black costume. On that cover, it's got to be in my top 30. I love that cover. Underrated. That is a great comic. All right. Next up, Wolverine number seven. This one I like better than that other one with the Hulk and Wolverine. Ah, it's got to be in my top 30, man. I love that cover. Next up, oh man, X-Men 140, where they fight Wendigo, underrated, my one of my favorite, John Byrne, top 50 at least, I love that comic book. Next up, Batman 244, it's got a, a Neil Adams cover with Ra's al Ghul, oh man, I got 60, it's got to be in my top 60 covers or so. All right, next up, X-Men 222, a rematch of Sabretooth and Wolverine by Silvestri. Top 80 at least. Oh, I love that cover. Uh, <laughs> 340, no question. We're going right to my top 20. It's one of my favorites. Next up, Batman Judgment. Our Batman Judge Dread, Judgment on Gotham with the Simon Bisley cover. This is going to be my top 80. Uh, it's going to have to fight its way. You can't see Batman very well. That's my only gripe. Amazing Spider-Man 311. One of my favorite, Todd McFarlane's on the run. I love the reflection cover. Top 100. It's going to have to fight, though, to stay in it. Oh, man. Batman Killing Joke by Brian Bolin. Where do I put that? Where do I put that? It's iconic. But it's going to have to fight. 
Next up, oh man, Detective Comics 400, another Neil Adams. It's a classic, the color, the lighting. This has got to be in my top 50. Ah, uh, yeah, top 50. Let's put it over here, top 50. All right, next up, oh man, all these, this is so hard, X-Men 212. One of the best black covers. First fight between Sabretooth and Wolverine. Barry Windsor Smith cover. I think it's Leonardi inside top 20. Uh, 25 or so, so it's going to drop down a bit. Savage Dragon number one of all the image comics number one. I, I usually display all of my image number ones over there on that bottom shelf. This one, I love it. Of all of them, it's one of my favorites. It's, it's going to have to fight, though. Eric Larson, you're going to have to fight. Oh, man, Miracle Man 21. Evelyn Cream there on the cover with the sapphire teeth. I love the glow of those teeth. Top 20. I absolutely love that cover. Next up, we got Amazing Spider-Man 300. It's always been a favorite of mine. There's a story how I got it. Yeah, top 20. <laughs> Next up is Batman 366. A Simonson cover. I love how we use the type with it. It's iconic now. Yeah, I'm going to have to put it in my top 80 or so. Oh, man. Crow number one. J.O. Barr. The crow right there on the cover. Top 20. That's easy. All right. Hopefully these other ones are easy. No, X-Men 112. The tension in that one. Done by uh, Bob Layton and George Perez, I believe. Yeah. Pete, I just love that one. It's my one of my favorite. Top 20. Oh, man, I got too many in my top 20. They're going to have to filter down. Green Lantern, number 47. Oh, the return of those two. I love it. All right. We're going to have to. Something's got to give. Oh, <laughs> X-Men 268 with Jim Lee, one of my favorite X-Men covers. And it's got to be in the 70s. Next up, we got Fantastic Four, number 348, Art Adams. Oh, it's my favorite of that three-part series that he did. Oh, that's got to be in my top. Uh, yeah, top 70s again. Next up, all right, here we go. Amazing Spider-Man, number 301. My second favorite, it pairs well with Amazing Spider-Man 300, but it's going to have to fight to stay in it. Heroes for Hope, number one, Art Adams. It's one of my favorite Art Adams. Wolverine covers top 40 at least. Yeah, top, man, oh, yeah, right about there, right in the middle. All right, next up, X-Men 277, Jim Lee, Gambit, Wolverine. I redrew this one. Any comic that I loved enough to redraw, it deserves to be in the top 40 at least. All right, next up, Web of Spider-Man, number 32. My favorite of that, Craven's Last Hunt, Mike Zek. Spider-Man coming out of his grave. It's going to have to fight to stay in it, though. Oh, man. Okay, what if number seven, Wolverine, Liefeld is my favorite iteration of Liefeld with a gun, smoking a cigar, the lighting, top 20, easy. All right, next up, Spider-Man number one. This Now, I went through all the Spider-Man number one versions that I have. The gold. I don't have the platinum, which is about the only one. But this was the direct sales that was sold in the poly bag. And it's the black cover, and it didn't have a price there. And I like all of the elements on this cover the most. But it's got to fight. I'm sorry, it's got to fight. Last one. Next up, Champions number 10 where Ghost Rider is uh, putting his uh, flame onto Hercules and his Hellfire. That's what it was. I can never remember what it's called. That's one of my favorite comic book images, 30 or so. So it goes here. All right. I am going to go in my next video and, and um, water them all down so that uh, we can do uh, top and work our way from the bottom and rank every one of these. We'll have a heads-up battle between all the other covers, now that we have them organized, and I'll get rid of the bottom ones on the list. We'll just focus on the next 100. We'll go 100, 890, 80, all the way up. So and this is a lot of fun for me, and if you were keeping up, you got one more coming. 
Catch me next time and we'll have the brackets up and we'll go all through these and we'll figure out what my top 100 comic books of all time are and especially what my top 10 are. So thanks for joining me. Catch me next time. Thanks again.